Okay, so this is a quick introduction to the OASIS uh, dry suction system that we use here at Kaiser Oakland and Richmond Emergency Departments. So, you know, nurses that don't work in trauma centers a lot aren't necessarily familiar with, you know, placement of chest tubes with the physician counterparts and then, of course, setting up the dry suction system. So, um, just a, a quick walkthrough for that. The doctors are going to be busy putting in their chest tube. They'll be fully surgical, fully sterile, and so we'll be able to kind of ignore that. But we know as nurses that we need to get this piece set up so that we can begin to evacuate the pleural space the moment they're ready for it. Um, this is the actual setup itself. I've taken it out of its overwrap, which is also sterile, and kind of wanted to just walk you, walk you through a bit of using it. Uh, this tube here is actually what's going to interface with the chest tube once they put it in. Uh, it's really important not to touch this at all with your hands. Um, it's actually got a sterile cover over the top of it, so when you hand it to the doctor, essentially stay far enough back of the tip of it so that they can take it and still you know, do their sterile piece and connect the tube for you. Once they are connected, I just want to put a big plug in. Tape this junction here like you have never taped anything before. Go completely overboard on taping. I mean, tape it this way, tape it that way, tape it a million times this way. We used to use foam tape. We did anything we could so that these two don't separate. This separating uh, is kind of catastrophic um, if you don't catch it immediately and you, you know, it leads right to attention hemothorax. So just be very, very, very liberal on taping for the chest tube. Another cool part about this um, sort of rubberized, silicone tubing here is you can sample through it. And inevitably, you're going to get uh, blood draining from the pleural space that's going to be resting in dependent loops here. You can go ahead and put a needle in. It's self-sealing, which is really cool. You can put a needle in, take your sample, run it to the lab, do a you know, culture and sensitivity, whatever you want to do, and then keep on trucking. So that's a nice thing to know about this tubing. Yeah, the integrated clamp, don't lose these. These are always really important so that you can, um, you know, obviously test for leaks and things like that in the system if need be and suddenly clamp if there's an emergency. All right, other things that are cool about it, there are feet uh, that you can rotate out to give yourself a slightly better base of support on the bottom. In the back, you have your um, uh, 20 mils of fluid that you need to create your two centimeter water seal. This is as simple as um, simply just pulling this off, pulling your tab out of the water seal compartment, and then just dumping the entire thing in here. It kind of goes for, it looks a little bit like a um, you know, blue kind of a toilet bowl water. But once it's all the way in, the dye will uh, take effect and you're gonna get blue water everywhere you need it to be and you'll notice we're up to the zero mark <clears throat> which is perfect and that'll come into play a little bit later once we actually start operating it uh, other th things that are nice about this so this is your this is your drainage collection system for your serosanguinous blood for whatever kind of drainage you're getting this is actually meant to be written on by ballpoint pens which is cool uh, I don't have a ballpoint pen on me but um, you can actually go on ahead and chart your output so you could write something you know you know like for instance 11 a.m you know that you had, you know, whatever, a thousand milliliters out. You know what I mean? And you can draw a line right here. And that would let you know that at 11 a.m. you'd had this much out and you could document it. And then on the next shift or the next four hours or two hours or whatever your protocol happens to be, you can document the same thing uh, on, on the face of the, um, the monitor here. And of course, please forgive the fact that this is not 1100 milliliters. <laughs> I think you get my point. Anyway, so our, our water is in. Suction is going to be connected to here, and once the suction is connected, we're going to see uh, essentially the bubbling and tidal action of the respiratory activity through here. This bellow chamber here, which is the this uh, E chamber, if we once we turn this into suction, you'll see these bellows kind of expand, and when they expand to the delta mark, that means that we're getting minus 20 centimeters of water seal, which of course is the classic uh, degree of suction that we want. In terms of uh, changing the amount of vacuum that you want for these things, there's a small little dial here on the side that allows you to go up and down minus 10, minus 20 centimeters of water seal, whatever you need, and you can go from there. So we have our vacuum regulator as well. We have a, um, a pop-off valve here. We've got our float ball oscillation titling window here, which allows you to see the degree of air leak. And we have our collection chamber here, and we have our feet on the bottom. This is our sampling port. If you ever needed to, by the way, this is a quick click. I've never needed to take these off in all of my years, but you can do that as well. And then we put our water in here. So if I were to, want to set this up, uh, I would go in and take my saddle up or my argyle tubing and connect it over to here, ensure that it's connected over to my suction canister. And it's going to get loud here for a second, but um, we're going to turn it on and start actually evacuating the pleural space. So you'll notice right now we have a ton of air leaking, and that's because this is not in a human. But if I were to suddenly evacuate all the air in the pleural space, watch this chamber here. Oh, look, the bubbling has stopped. So we expect the bubbling to stop pretty quickly, but often what it looks more like is something along these lines, where you get a little bit of bubbling while our um, leak is being dealt with essentially, and then over time eventually it's going to stop completely. If you um, put this in, of course, what you should expect to see first is a huge amount of air while we evacuate the pleural space that gradually, gradually, gradually tapers off as we've dealt with the problem.
Also take a note here while I, before I shut this off, there's these bellows that are fully expanded to the delta mark. That indicates that we have a full main, minus 20 centimeters of water seal, and that's the vacuum that the physicians will typically order. <sighs> All right, enough of that. So, um, wanted to make a point here again. You know, when we first put these in, especially for our pneumothorax, you know, we expect to see vigorous, vigorous bubbling. Typically within the first five minutes, depending on the size of the leak or what caused the leak, we'll begin to see that bubbling taper off significantly. And then it'll go down to zero. What I can't simulate here, because I don't have a mannequin, is what another thing you'll know that this is all functioning correctly is this little float ball will title. Every respiration will go up and down, up and down, with the patient's own intrathoracic pressure is changing as a result of the diaphragm dropping, which is a nice thing to know. So normal titling, for the most part, a general gradual decrease in your uh, air leak that you're noticing here. These are all good things. Full bellows expansion, minus 20 centimeters of water seal, and you're good to go. Um, this should always be kept on the floor, but if you uh, want to not keep it on the floor for transport, of course, they have uh, integrated handles that you can pull out here as well which allow you to hang it on a bed rail. Here's an example of one of the handles here. So that's just another nice thing to know about this device. And that's it. I mean, this is it's a really straightforward device to use. Set it up before you need it so that you're ready to go. The moment the doctor wants to connect, you can go on ahead and kind of aseptically hand him the tip of this, hand him or her, and they can go on and connect. Once it's connected, ensure that you've taped this really vigorously. And of course, the last piece is ensure that you've taped the actual insertion site with a mountain of tape so that there's absolutely no way it can slip out at all. Uh, those are really critical junctures. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening.